And the 65th Daytona 500 is underway. What's up, y'all? After the 2023 Daytona 500, the storylines are abundant. And if you watched on TV, then we witnessed the Fox Commercials 500, but that would need to be another video. And with Ricky Stenhouse's victory, an interesting storyline takes place. The last three Daytona 500 winners have a combined five career Cup Series wins. And some are making the case that the quote-unquote underdogs winning the last three years aren't a good thing for the sport. But let's take a quick look at why this perception may be taking place in the cases against that notion, and why Ricky Stenhouse himself isn't even an underdog story. To the flag to end stage two, three wide, the sixth throw back, and it's Chastain the inside. Now that energy's all broke up now. Now we're going to see the cars coming from behind. Where's he going to go? They're both going to get to him pretty hard, pretty quick. All right, Stenhouse gets the white flag. flag. The next flag is three wide. Well, good. You got the help. Larson tried to go to the middle. Oh, he got turned. Larson Pastrana in the fence. We have still green. No, the caution is out. And we'll wait for official word. Since Trevor Bain's true underdog win in the 2011 Daytona 500, we have had champion Matt Kenseth win in 2012, seven-time champ Jimmy Johnson win in 2013, the second 500 win for favorite Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 2014, while at the time less established but now clearly established two-time champion Joey Logano won his in 2015. 2016 was Denny Hamlin's first Daytona 500 victory. And 2017 saw champion Kurt Busch win his Daytona 500. 2018 saw Austin Dillon win the 500, but it was in the three car. Then to close this stretch of time, Denny Hamlin cemented himself as the best Daytona 500 driver in the last couple decades with the second and third Daytona 500 victories in 2019 and 2020. You noticed in that extended time frame, the only driver listed that's not a Hall of Fame driver was 2018's Austin Dillon. The sport and the fans had just become accustomed to this extended time frame that a championship level driver and a driver that was already established was always winning the great American race year in and year out. So then when excellent super speedway drivers Michael McDowell and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. along with rookie Daytona Xfinity Series winner Austin Sendrick win the last three Daytona 500s, we as fans can kind of be misled by our own habits. We were just so used to a certain mold of a Cup Series driver winning the Daytona 500. But here's why Stenhouse's win wasn't a fluke and isn't bad for the 500. Ricky Stenhouse already had two super speedway wins coming into the Daytona 500. And as Denny Hamlin has said, you don't luck into multiple of these wins. And Stenhouse was leading last year's race late. He finished second at Talladega and has been up front year in and year out the super speedways. The difference with Ricky Stenhouse is perception. While Ricky Stenhouse won at Talladega and then July Daytona races in 2017, the years after he had created the new reputation that many started coining the nicknames, whether it was Ricky Spinhouse, Recky Stenhouse, Ricky Wreckhouse, the nicknames had come from Ricky's overaggression. Whether it was 2018 at Daytona multiple times over, or 2020 Darlington wrecking on lap one of the first race back after the season stoppage. But what Ricky had going into the 500 was experience, making the moves to get to the front, and experience being up front the super speedways. This is directly visible with Kyle Larson, who's a world-class talent, but doesn't have experience running up front at super speedways. And what has Kyle Larson done in the last two times he's been up front late in the super speedways? He made a bad move late at Talladega last year that gave the win to Ross Chastain. And then in this Daytona 500, after working with Stenhouse and Byron to get to the front, he didn't make the right block or mistimed the block, causing him to get left in the middle and fall back to where Almarola got into Travis Pastrana and created the wreck that ended the race and allowed for Ricky Stenhouse to get the 2023 Daytona 500 victory. Eric 
Jones with help. Here comes Almirola. Crash into the wall. I think it's Stenhouse. It might be Blaney. Oh my goodness. They were- and here's a second argument against these being underdogs, or that the Daytona 500 winner doesn't require extensive talent. Collectively, we may have forgotten, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is a two-time Xfinity Series champion. You don't luck into two of those. Austin Sendrick, in my opinion, was the biggest surprise of all the Daytona 500 winners since Trevor Bain. But since his success is more recent, we may all remember he's the 2020 Xfinity Series champion and was second place in the 2021 finish, along with his Daytona Xfinity Series win. So he was no slouch winner either. While Michael McDowell doesn't have the success of either of those two drivers, he's a well-known and excellent super speedway racer, showing that nobody is lucking into these Daytona 500 wins. And Ricky, I know the first one will always be so special, but becoming only the sixth driver to win them back-to-back. Share with us the emotion of this moment. So while Ricky Stenhouse may not have been the greatest storyline, or a fan favorite winner, the history of the great American race still shows that it takes everything going perfectly for a team to win, or for a world-class driver and team to get it done and win the Harley J. Earl Trophy.